The Altruistic and Pro-Social Behavior Institute at Humboldt State University in Arcata, California is unique in its dedication to the study of altruism. It was created to study rescuers of Jews during the Holocaust. The rescuers are both Jewish and Gentile. Recently, the Institute has widened its scope to include Carnegie heroes, military heroes, moral exemplars, and volunteers. Many graduate students have used the Institute as a primary source of material for a wide-ranging look into altruism. One graduate student studied African-American rescuers in the Los Angeles riots. What do we allow when we say, oh, it's, it's not me, it's not my family, it's not my neighborhood, it's not my people? Uh, King talked about us being tied in a single garment of destiny. Another graduate student electronically connected a sociology class to Julia Butterfly Hill, the environmental activist who spent two years living in a tree with great danger in order to protect a redwood forest. A lot of times in life, if we're afraid or we're angry or whatever, we just run away from the situation. But I couldn't run away. I was in one spot day in and day out, and that made me deal with it. The Institute has brought both rescuers and survivors of the Holocaust in contact with students from grade school through graduate school. And it wasn't until you came in and told your personal story, and it put a face to the entire problem. and it brought in a family and you know parents that were lost and children that were lost and brothers and sisters and it made it more real and the fact that you're here and it just amazes me but i lived in new york city and uh, i was in a shooting on a commuter train a lot of people were killed a lot of people were injured and um, in fact the three people who were sitting around me were all shot and i walked away and the reason I walked away is because somebody rescued me in that situation. And it was a really hard time around that particular event because the media was just like, you know, what kind of animal would do this kind of thing? You know, what is wrong with our society that an instance or an event like this could happen? But because I felt very blessed to have emerged from that situation unscathed, the question I was asking is, what is it that made that person save my life? Because he really put himself in a lot of danger um, to help me and a lot of other people. I've never even met the three men who did that, but, uh, um, but I'm alive because of them. And so I decided that uh, I wanted to go back to school. I decided that I wanted to study, you know, what is it that makes people risk themselves on behalf of other people, started poking around and discovered this interesting Oliner and Oliner book called The Altruistic Personality. Uh, I was living in California, which was good because I wanted to go to grad school and uh, discovered Sam at Humboldt State and I went. The course that I had taken with Professor Oliner was a course on race and ethnic relations. And um, the course was taught in a way that I think a lot of race and ethnic relations classes are taught. You're dealing with a lot of problems, a lot of tensions, a lot of the historical evils that have gone on and the atrocities that have occurred between different racial and ethnic groups in the past and are still going on today. What Sam did, though, at the end of the course, for the last few weeks of the course, was that he initiated a discussion on forms of altruism and ways that we can extend ourselves beyond our racial and ethnic boundaries, these boundaries that we've constructed, and we can compassionately reach out to other people in various forms of altruism. So in a sense, he really ended the course on a, on a positive note in, in, in talking about altruism, and specifically we looked at the book on rescuers of Jews during Nazi-occupied Nazi Europe. And I think it really did what Sam had always hoped it would do in that he doesn't want students leaving his classroom with a feeling of despair or with a feeling of um, just like they can't do anything, like the world's such a terrible place and it's just there's no hope for it. He wants to leave students with a sense of hope. And I think that's what it did for me, ending the course on that note. I have been um, deeply uh, involved with uh, two types of human behavior. One type is what I call the nature of evil. <coughs> Subsumed under this would be such things as anti-Semitism, genocide, racism, discrimination, homophobia. 
and so I have been reading and teaching and studying in this area. Um, when I was also searching for some sort of antidote to this, uh, what might be, what could be done to change the hearts and minds of people, and what can we teach our children to bring about a more caring society. The Institute focuses on pro-social behavior and altruism being one extreme example of it. Uh, and the Institute keeps on focusing on those forms of behavior and trying to be both scientific in its analysis as well as pragmatic in the sense of trying to find out ways that some of the research ideas suggest might be practical applications. So it has both those, both those um, goals. It's kind of a, a unique place in that it's a center for research on altruistic and pro-social behavior in many, many facets. Um, and it's consistent. I like that about the Institute. It's a place where that kind of research is ongoing. But the Institute is just a place where um, Sam is constantly on the cutting edge. He's constantly being creative and taking it in new directions. And, and it's a very dynamic research environment. I first read Sam and Pearl's book on rescuers of Jews during Nazi-occupied Europe. What I felt was kind of revealed in that work is that there's a sort of conception, a common conception about people who help, people really specifically who risk their lives to help other people. And it's that they, uh, they're just ordinary people who come upon these life-threatening situations or these extraordinary situations and they respond heroically. but that there's really, other than that, there's nothing out outrageously extraordinary about them. They just responded in a way that the situation deemed. And what it seemed like Sam and Pearl found through their research, and this came as a surprise to me because I think I held that conception also, is that these people, in fact, were altruistic throughout their lives. They were just altruistic in smaller ways or at, at levels not as quite as grand or as grandiose as, you know, risking their lives to save another person. But through their lives, day in and day out, they had um, undertaken smaller acts of altruism and help. And if you want to promote caring or pro-social behavior in the society, you have to influence many social institutions. Uh, and that means not just education, which is one of its most influential social institutions so, since kids are all required to go to school for many years. That's a pretty important institution. Certainly families are a critical social institution. So is business. So is your neighborhood peers an important social institution. So are your religious institutions. So it, you have to really go, if you really want to infuse care in a society, you really have to influence all social institutions. Uh, Petrum Sorokin, the famous Harvard sociologist born in Russia, um, was tossed to oblivion by some of the people because he was a philosopher of love. And I think the time has come now to teach about caring, love, and compassion.